Hey guys, welcome back to the CS Classroom, or just welcome to the CS Classroom if you're new. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about this Ivy Computer Science GPT that I created to help students prepare for not only the Ivy Computer Science exam, but also any of the other, any of the other additional tasks like the IA and EE. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about why I created this. I'm going to give a demo as along with a description of the chatbot's capabilities or the GPT's capabilities. I'll talk a little bit about how I trained it as well as limitations I came across in training. And then you can go ahead and play with the GPT. And if you find anything wrong with the GPT, you can make suggestions so I can integrate those suggestions into my training. Now, if you don't really care about this and you just want to use the GPT, just go straight to the description and you can access the GPT and play around with it. But please do leave feedback because that's pretty crucial to making it better. I kind of see this as more of a community resource than anything else. Now, why did I create this? Well, first of all, I kind of have this little community here on my uh, YouTube channel. And I have tons of subscribers who are studying IV computer science or preparing for the exam. And part of the problem that's always existed with IV computer science is that there's no real accurate centralized IBCS resource. I've tried to build that here in my YouTube channel and through the resources that I've created in my online store, but I felt like a GPT was a natural um, next step to allow really quick access to anything involving IB computer science. Now, what this does is it is obviously like a handy resource for test preparation, and it also gives quick access to all my textual content. So for some of you who may not know, I run an online store for the CS Classroom, and I sell really well-organized study guides that help that aid in preparation for the exam. Now, I think the advantage of these is just how well they're designed and how easy it is to go through the information, but I still want all of that content to be easily accessible to everyone. Hence, that's been integrated into the chatbot, and you can access any of that information through asking questions in the GPT. And finally, I wanted to learn more about GPTs. Obviously, ChatGPT is a huge technology, not only for education, but all fields. And in the future, I want to deploy other GPTs to a wider audience. So for me, this was kind of a just a, an experiment to see how these work. Now, what can the GPT do? So basically, the GPT can answer any questions about the IBCS exam, the curriculum, the IA, or the EE. It can generate and explain IB pseudocode, and also ask, answer any specific content-based questions pertain, pertaining to the IB exam. Now, to get a real idea of how the GPT works and what it can do, let's, let's just play around with it. So right here, this is actually the back end of the GPT, and I can train the GPT here in the GPT Builder, and I can use the chat as normal, or the GPT like sort of normal, uh, normal chat here in this interface. Now, one thing I also did is I uploaded a bunch of PDFs with the knowledge that I want the uh, GPT to know and access. Anyways, let's ask it some questions. So the first question I want to ask is, what are the topics covered in option A of the IBCS exam? Option A being the database option. So it's going to search through its knowledge, which is what I updated right here with all these PDFs, and then also like what I pasted right here in the, GP in the GPT Builder. Some stuff I pasted, some stuff I uploaded, depending on how I wanted things organized. And I'll talk a bit more about that later. Okay, so as we can see right here, we've got a bunch of different topics that are covered in option A. One thing that is kind of weird is it says vocabulary bank and random extra HL content. And those are things that are actually on the study guide that I uploaded. So that's not necessarily correct, but at the same time, we have all of the different topics, including uh, those that correspond to HL here when we ask the question. Now, another topic or another question I want to ask is, is sensor fusion uh, something I need to know for paper three? Paper three. And again, we're going to search uh, the knowledge base. And it says it's not covered, which is weird because it's definitely covered. So it's probably something that I'll have to train it again on. 
let's say, okay. So let's maybe give it a different question. What are some of, what are some of the topics uh, covered in paper three? Okay, so that's kind of weird because right here, it says that sensor fusion is not a topic, but right here when I ask it um, like what topics are covered, it does actually give sensor fusion. So that's probably something I'll have to integrate into training and fix later on, but there you go. The last question I'm gonna ask it is, uh, generate an example of a loop in IB pseudocode. Because I think this is really important because for a lot of students, pseudocode is something that's difficult to uh, learn. Okay, and that's actually genu generally correct. Um, we can also actually execute more complicated examples, but I'll leave it at that. So there's some examples of how you can use it um, or how you can use this GPT. As you saw, sometimes things don't work perfectly like with the sensor fusion question, but I'm continually working on fixing those loopholes. Okay, so actually the next thing this GPT can do is answer IB questions in PDF format, including trace tables and pseudocode problems. Now the results aren't always perfect, and we may need to prompt GPT to answer in pseudocode, but it kind of works sometimes. Um, I would say the other problem too is if they're images, they may not fully extract them, but I've actually seen it work pretty well. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So I think what I'm gonna do is I have a PDF here already saved with some IB problems. And so we've got this one right here. There is a trace table, and then there's a construct an algorithm problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload this to the GPT. So that's going to be Q2 PDF. We're going to say answer A, B, and C in the uh, in the question in the PDF document. Use pseudocode. Use IB pseudocode where necessary. And let's give that a try. So it's analyzing it. It's kind of seeing what's up. Okay, so it says it contains images or scanned pages rather than text. Can you analyze the uh, scan the images uh, using OCR and then perform the task? Okay, that's weird. Like normally it works, like it's worked in the past, but today it doesn't seem to be working that well. Um, that's actually more of a problem with ch with ChatGPT in general than uh, than this GPT, and it's kind of one of the drawbacks of using the GPT right now. But we'll come back to that. Anyway, so with training, there's a few ways I do training. So one of them is going to be just uploading documents with information. But the big problem is that like GPT doesn't always know how to make sense of this information. So a lot of times in the GPT builder, I need to explicitly give uh, give it instructions on how to use that information. Now, what I want to do to show you how training actually works is I'm actually going to fix that problem with sensor fusion that we saw earlier. So for example, um, we'll just say, um, okay, so I want to, if I want to fix the problem with sensor fusion, I also want to fix the problem in which it doesn't maybe recognize all the other terms in, um, in paper three. So, uh, make sure that you know that all of the following terms are relevant to paper three, to paper three content. And then I'm going to go to my study guide uh, for paper three, which is in text format. So let's go down here. Let's see paper three. So this is in text format right here. I'm going to go to my vocabulary bank. So I'm just going to take all of these terms and just kind of copy them into the GPT builder. And I'm just going to paste these into the GPT builder so that like the GPT is aware that all these terms pertain to paper three. So I just did that. And then it's, it's kind of making sense of that or so it's accepting that and it's updating the GPT accordingly. Cool, here you go. So now we could say is, uh, 
is Sensor Fusion, a part of the Paper 3 content. Let's see what it says. Okay, so now it knows that Sensor Fusion is a part of the Paper 3 content. Remember, initially it didn't, but since we trained it, there we go. So that's a great example of training. Now, I train the, JP, the GPT by uploading study guides and pseudocode snippets in text format. I also pasted information, especially the pseudocode, um, so that the GPT knew like exactly where that information applied. Because sometimes if you just upload PDFs or documents here, it sees the information, but it doesn't really know how to use it. But oftentimes what I would do is I paste information here in the GPT builder and then give like explicit examples or give instructions on where and what types of questions to use the information to respond to. Um, I also instructed the GPT to prior prioritize the information I uploaded over external sources. And I taught it some terminology. So for example, I taught it to recognize IBCS, IB computer science, or any related terms as applying to just the IB diploma program, computer science uh, curriculum or exam. And then I just asked GPT a bunch of questions to see like what it could answer and what it couldn't. And then I made corrections in the GPT builder. Now here's some prompts that I use to train. So I would say here's all the information that is relevant to option A of the IB computer science exam, prioritize this information over other information on the internet. And then I would just paste all of the content, like basically my whole study guide for option A. And while I did upload the option A study guide, for some reason it seemed to associate option A with the content I pasted better. Um, any answers to coding questions in paper one must be in pseudocode and answers to option D must be Java. This is important because sometimes I would ask it to like solve uh, option D questions and it would respond in pseudocode, which obviously is not correct. So this next training prompt right here is what I used in order to train on IB pseudocode. So basically I gave some instructions on what IB pseudocode is and that the GPT should use it. And then after this, I just pasted a bunch of examples of IB pseudocode so that the GPT could analyze them and then use them to produce further solutions. And actually it tended to work pretty well. I needed to make some corrections, but overall it worked pretty well. And then this next prompt was where I basically added all the information for paper three. Uh, I just copied it from a study guide I made. And I told, I basically told the GPT what was in the study guide, like how it's organized. And then I pasted the information. And this was a last one where I just told it to prioritize the information I uploaded over any external sources. Now, as you saw, like from our example, uh, uploading a, an exam question, there are a lot of limitations and difficulties. And part of this is because this GPT is a very new technology. Now it doesn't upload, interpret upload documents perfectly. Um, so for example, right here, when I uploaded some of my own documents, I really needed to give it, needed to give it instructions on how to use this information. Um, and things like pseudocode, it generally follows the conventions, but it's not always perfect. And accordingly, I need to provide, I need to train it and tell it when it's right and when it's wrong. Um, OCR conversions aren't always perfect. Again, you saw that. Um, sometimes solutions were produced in some weird regular, like sort of normal, I guess, conventional pseudocode rather than IV pseudocode. So it needed to be prompted to use pseudocode. Um, and sometimes like, I couldn't anticipate all the questions that might be asked. So sometimes I would ask it a question and then it wouldn't respond correctly. And then I need to train it accordingly. So I need to train it to answer specific questions in a certain way, which is pretty tedious. Um, sometimes it just fails to access information that's been trained on and then I need to retrain it. And then I think the biggest one right now is outages. There was a recent cyber attack on the GPT platform and a lack of documentation on how it works. So GPT is still very much the wild west. I think it only came out like a week ago. So there's still a lot of technical problems that need to be worked out, but I expect those to be smoothed over, to be smoothed over in the next couple of weeks and months to come. Especially because GPT is opening their own marketplace where GPTs can be monetized. Now in the future, I want to train the GPT on IB questions and corresponding mark schemes. So basically like upload questions and mark schemes so that GPT can get a better understanding of how to solve IB questions. And I also just want to generally train for more random questions. Just basically like tell it what it should, how it should answer in a wider variety of situations. And your comments will definitely help with that. Now to wrap up, this GPT does need more training, but I still, I do still, still think that there is some use in the GPT, especially for less complex and content-based questions. 
One thing I will say is that it's a lot more difficult to create a bot for GPT rather than the A-level or AP computer science exam. Just because the IB curriculum, the IB computer science curriculum is poorly documented. So there's not like really one static clear document that the GPT can refer to in order to answer questions and search for information. A-level and AP computer science are a lot more clearly documented along with the content that's covered on the exam. And honestly, a lot of people say that like AI is coming for all of our jobs, especially teachers, but in this particular case, without a detailed knowledge of the IB curriculum, I would not have been able to create this particular GPT. And I'd like to say that also you should build your own. Like ultimately this computer science channel is about empowering people to create their own programs and to learn computer science concepts better. And maybe based on what you saw in this video, you can go ahead and create your own GPT on whatever topic you want. Anyways, I hope that was useful to you. Uh, if you like this video, please go ahead and like it and subscribe to the channel. Additionally, go ahead and try out the GPT and give me some feedback in the comments so I can use it to further improve the GPT. Also, uh, I don't like for me, it doesn't seem to be working right now, but do check out the, uh, the functionality in which you can upload questions because it has worked in the past and it is really cool to see um, the GPT actually just analyze PDFs of IB questions and then provide you answers with them. Anyways, see you next time.